Hello everyone and welcome again to Fuse Room Studio. My name is Alberto. It didn't change from the last video and probably never will unless things were really wrong. In this third episode, we are going to talk about analog saturation modeling for tape machines. So here it is, analog channel AC202, the twin brother of AC101, which we've seen in the previous video. What does AC202 do? This plugin is aimed at recreating the behavior of tape machines. And who hasn't seen a plugin that aims at emulating tape machine harmonics or behavior? There's thousands of them, I think, these days. But back in the days, 15 years ago, I don't remember exactly when, MacDSP was one of the first companies to develop this plugin type. And as you can see, there's no fancy interface, even if this plugin, again, it says it's second skin, I think. But they didn't change it that much. They made the knobs bigger, nicer, but they didn't introduce any fancy, sexy user interface. What this means is that, is that a lot of people are having issues using this because it just doesn't look like it's doing tape stuff. However, I still found this plugin to be more useful to my way of mixing than other plugins. And I've still used many for different reasons. And I like to have different plugins, so don't get me wrong. This is just something I picked so that you can focus on the behavior of tape. And a lot of the characteristics that you find here are present in all of the other plugins. So things apply. Again, you have input and output stage, aha, and the auto makeup gain, which again, doesn't usually makes a perfect output, uh, a perfect output compensation. So I tend not to use it, but you might. It certainly does auto compensate to a certain extent, but the level of compensation has an offset to me. That's why I don't like to use it. Then what you have from left to right, actually from right to left, you have vintage and modern types of tape. Vintage tends to drive into more, into saturation more easily. Modern is able to take a heavier hit before getting into saturation. I don't know what types of tape formulations, what types of tape these are. I would guess 456 and GP9, maybe, I don't know. Then you have IC1 and IC2 EQ type. What this is, is that when you record it on tape, the tape machine itself would EQ the signal in a way you wouldn't hear, but it would go on tape, your signal, your mix, whatever you would put on tape, would go on tape with an equalization factor, which is the IEC. One, I think, is for Europe and two is for the US. I don't remember. You can read in the manual because one, I think, is NAB, the other is CCIR. I'm not an expert on tape, so I might be completely wrong. But the reason for this is that tape would receive a boosted version of your mix, boosted in ways that would improve the signal to noise ratio and improve the fidelity of the translation. Remember, these are not machines that ha have a specific um, fidelity to them. But back then, they used everything they had at their disposal to make things sound better. So these two ways are EQs that get the signal to sound differently on the way in, and then they compensate exactly or sort of the opposite on the way out. So you don't hear the EQ, but it does change the way it hits tape. Then you have tape speed, 7.5, 15 or 30 inches per second. And then you have bias and release. Release is again how easier it is for the device to lose the saturation factor. And bias is the offset between high and low frequency saturation. So how easy it is for the device to get into saturation because of low frequencies or because of high frequencies. Or if you want to think about it differently, it's how dark or bright the tape will sound in a way. You can look at it in two different ways. Ultimately, you will turn, up, turn the knob and decide what sounds best for the mix. This is why I like this plugin. It doesn't have anything preconceived. You just make things to work following the saturation principles of tape. Then you have this, this button here that lets you select the type of tape machine that you have. And you have Swiss, Japano, USAM, USAA, etc., etc. Then you have roll-off and bump. Roll-off regulates where the high pass, I would say, of the machine is, and bump is the typical bump in frequencies that you have. You see, every machine has a different way of rolling off and bumping, as they say. USAM has a specific way of you know, a wider bump, 
and an attenuation. USAA a has a tighter one. Japan S just has a very smooth bump. All of these ways are the reason why tape sounds the way it sounds. So this plugin emulates the change in frequencies that tape would you know, um, affect your sound with, and also the change in dynamics response. So it's time domain and frequency domain. We're going to test it on the same song we had before. It's a groove by Marco Pizzini and Grubiera. It's a quartet that records everything live, and then it gets everything sliced up into Ableton Live in live. So the word live is you know, pretty intense in that quartet. He's a guy in Cuneo, Italy, and runs this noodles label. It's a very cool project. Check it out. But we already saw this with Analog Channel 101. Now we're just going to focus on tape. Where did I put this? This I put on the SAM channel, not on every single desk, you, on any single track. You could. Nobody stops you from doing that. But here we're, we're going to just use it for the mix bus. Let's see how it works. Let's see with bypass, and then let's see with engage, and then we're gonna just test some settings. All right? You can hear things move differently, but there's also a very slight high frequency change attenuation in a way, I would say. I don't know, it's just more cohesive and dynamic. Maybe the vocals are also a little more forward in a way, so it's cool. Let's now tweak it to our liking just by changing this. This is already something I had made just for this video, but now we're gonna just start changing machine, roll off pump, maybe we'll find something that sounds better. <laughs> Okay, this setting, for example, I also like. It's USAA, a lot more roll-off, a lot more bump. The bias I retuned. But you notice when I ended up by uh, at the very far end on the right of the plugin, I changed the tape formulation and everything changed. That's why I explained it from right to left. I would probably first select vintage or modern because once you make up your mind on the various knobs, then if you go change the tape type, as you would expect from a tape machine, probably, uh, everything changes. You would need to rebias the machine. You would need to just adjust a lot of stuff or call a tape op, which used to be very expert, but also expensive guy. Here, you don't have to call anyone. You just make your own mistakes and try your best. Thank you very much. Ciao.